Hello, I'm Dwayne Lessner, and I'll be giving a demo of the Container Storage Interface Volume Driver for Kubernetes. Nutanix recently added support for a CSI driver. It leverages Nutanix Volumes, which is our block-based storage, and Nutanix File, which is aptly our file-based storage. Um, both are able to provide scalable and persistent storage for your stateful applications on Kubernetes. So with that being said, Nutanix customers can mosey on over to the portal, portal.nutanix.com, and download the CSI volume driver. Uh, all It was developed in a 100% open source manner. You can use all of your favorite cube cuddle commands to um, get it deployed, which we'll demo here today. We already have it downloaded and untarred, so let's first get our system accounts in place. We'll take a look at what we currently have on the system. You see we have Flannel running, and we also have our old uh, Nutanix dynamic provisioner. Um, so now we're going to add the CSI version. So we'll add the needed RBAC for the driver. Um, so that is completely downloaded. You can pop open the YAML at your leisure. We will confirm that we have some new system accounts and roles attached. First of all, look at the service accounts again. So now we have our attacher, the CSI plugin, and the provisioner. To deploy the containerized CSI volume driver, we need to deploy stateful sets and a daemon set. The stateful set manages application deployment, deletion, and scaling, while the stateful set um, also guarantees that only one instance of a pod is running at once, which prevents multiple instances of the external provisioner and external attacher running in the cluster. The first one to run is the attacher. It's a sidecar container that watches and monitors volume attachments, objects and triggers, controller publish and unpublish against the CSI volume driver. So we'll get that deployed. So the stateful set is now deployed. We need to install the driver register. The register is a sidecar container that registers the CSI driver with Kubelet. It also sets up a Unix domain socket and listens to node publish volume events. So we'll do that one next. And so these are already provided to you, so it's pretty easy to get up going. And the last one, the provisioner, it's actually going to do the mounting. So we have that going. We can take a look at all of the pods that are running in the system. So now we see we have the, the CSI plugin running on the nodes, or about to, it's just getting set up, the attacher. And we also have the provisioner. So now we can go off and create a secret for that we can use in conjunction with our storage class. So I believe I already have one set up. Go into this example. For this demo, we're going to use the block based storage. <clears throat> Deploy our secret. We can take a look at it actually. So we're just using this uh, secret with a key. That's how you can make up your key for your environment, taking the prism central, or sorry, the prism element IP, the VIP, and the port number along with your credentials. Um, obviously you don't use password or my password. So we have that set up. We can go ahead and run that. So we have a secret uh, created. Now we want to add a storage class. The storage class is going to provide all of the connection information uh, for us and determine what, if we want to use flash mode, whether we want to pin the, the volumes into flash on hybrid clusters, whether to re delete or retain on the re reclaim policy. Since we already have one set up, let's take a quick look. So we have our storage class, we have our prism IP, we can use the secret for both provision and publish. We're really only looking after the one here. 
So it's the same connection information. That's the name of our storage class, ACS-ABS. <clears throat> so we'll see that come into the picture shortly. We'll create that. Our storage class is created. Now we can create some volumes. The great thing about this is that now that we have a storage class, we can create a volume claim template. So if we have an application that's going to deploy multiple containers and they all need some way of persisting data, we can just use this template. And so we don't have to create multiple volumes manually. So that'll free the administrators for doing that. So let's take a look at our storage classes. Cube cuddle get storage class or just SC. <clears throat> So we have this, we had one already set up using the old provisioner, and now we will have this one setting up the CSI provisioner. So we're going to use Yugabyte DB. They have a deployment already made up that comprises of six different pods <clears throat> that we can show. So let's get it deployed. You can take a look at the deployment file. So we already have it set up. I think the, the interesting part is right at the bottom, we have this volume claim template. So every time it needs a volume, um, it can just go off and get it created automatically. And so it really eases the deployment. Yugabyte is pretty interesting, not, you know, not because it's like the scale out super high performant database with planet scale. I think from a business perspective, what's really cool about it is that um, whether you want to write to a Redis API, a Cassandra API, or Postgres, um, you can you know you can utilize it without really relearning anything. And I think that's kind of you know one of the the main factors around it. So let's go get that deployed. <clears throat> So it's going off. We can take a look at all of the, the pods on the system. Oh. So the, the images are getting pulled from the web for the masters and the tablet servers. Let's go see if the storage are getting provisioned. It's automatically provisioned all of the needed volumes. We have YugaDB up and running now. Replication factor three looks good. Let's run some workload on it just to make sure that we're not fooling anybody. So that'll create some load for us. So we have some load on fairly small deployment, but load nonetheless. Um, we can, now once that's up and going, we can actually take a look at, uh, we do have uh, Nutanix Epoch installed. So we can take a look at that in action. So we have uh, Nutanix Epoch, which is used uh, can provide like Google Maps for your application. So it has Fluent Bit, um, it's tracking that. It has our YugaDB um, tracking the load and communication to the, the environment. If we go to the dashboard, um, it's, you know, it's able to tell the tra traffic dynamically. It doesn't have to change the application. And we can see the workload being generated um, here's all the Cassandra stuff that's going on. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, and that's, you know, really all it takes for deploying a stateful application on Nutanix. Hope you enjoyed it.